This week on a special episode of Talking Central Arizona Sports, a look back at the football seasons of Bradshaw Mountain and Prescott High Schools. Hello everyone, my name is Torrance Dunham and welcome to a weekly podcast catching you up on the latest with Central Arizona sports teams. Part of Talking Glass Media's Cast 11 podcast network, the show features game previews and recaps along with interviews with coaches and players and much more. The show this week focuses on the football seasons of Prescott High School and Bradshaw Mountain High School. We'll start off with the Bradshaw Mountain Bears, who repeated as 4A Grand Canyon region champions. The Bears, after a 7-3 record last year and an opening round playoff loss to rival Prescott, entered the new season with question marks after most of their dominant own line from last season graduated. After a 41-14 opening win against Mika Mountain, the Bears hit a rough patch and dropped three straight as the team dealt with injuries and the defense was still trying to find their identity. The season turned around on October 7th with a 37-8 win against Thunderbird on the road as they would go on to roll off six more victories in a row, including a win over rival Prescott and the first home playoff win in more than a decade. The Bears' impressive run and the season came to an end on November 25th against the eventual state champion, ALA Gilbert North Eagles, in the quarterfinals of the state playoffs. Joining the show now to continue looking back at the Bradshaw Mountain football season is head coach Bob Young. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much. Hey, so a month has gone by since the end of the season. Uh, looking back, what will you remember about this team? Well, you know, I think just our, our uh, ability to make improvements as the year went along. You know, we started out one and three and, you know, it was looking really grim there for a while. And the, the guys just kept their nose on the grindstone and kept getting better and better and, you know, uh, to be able to win the region and, and then, you know, advancing the playoffs was a big deal. Uh, so you guys lost quite a bit of seniors from last year. Uh, speaking of growth, um, what kind of growth did you see from this team from summer camp all the way up until the playoffs in November? Yeah, just just everything. You know, like you said, we uh, we lost pretty much our whole offensive line, most of our linebackers. So, you know, we... Uh, we knew it was going to be a work in progress, and, you know, we had uh, some key seniors, you know, Grady Rose at quarterback, obviously, Malachi Stevenson, you know, Tanner Mitchell, all those seniors that did a great job leading the young guys, and, you know, we had a number of sophomores that had to step up, and, and uh, you know, every week they got better. So pretty memorable season for you guys in there. You have the... Uh... Uh, the first home playoff win in uh, quite a while. Uh, you have that long winning streak that you guys went on uh, after that rough start that you were mentioning. Um, what were some of your favorite moments during the, that time span that you can say maybe off the field or on the field? Um, well, you know, just uh, obviously off the field, just uh, having having some quality time with these guys, you know, being able to watch these guys grow up, you know, not only – uh, as a team, but, you know, individually, uh, like you said, that seven game winning streak, I think, you know, beating Prescott, that was a big deal. I think that kind of set the whole thing, you know, once, once we did that, you know, we thought we could run the table and, and, uh, you know, win the rest of our games in our region because we knew they were obviously the team to beat and, you know, beat Northwest Christian at home in the playoffs. That was a big deal. So, you know, those were probably the main main highlights. You know, as we've mentioned, there were some questions of what this team would be able to do this year, having lost a good amount of those seniors, the offensive line. Uh, but as we've mentioned, the team not only captured the region title again, but also won a home playoff game for the first time in more than a decade. Uh, how proud of you? How proud of you of the group and all they accomplished this year? Oh, just ex- extremely uh, of, you know, the whole, the whole program, you know, the players, the assistant coaches, everybody involved, just, you know, uh, being able to go back to back a- again, our region uh, is, is really strong. Obviously Prescott, you know, for the last two years, they've, 
made it to quarterfinals, <laughs> you know, being able to beat them uh, is a big deal. Coconino has been really strong. Lee Williams, I mean, uh, just, you know, getting through that gauntlet, you know, is, and being able to win it two years in a row is a big deal. We've talked about this a little bit already. Nine seniors uh, suited up in the black and red for the last time this season. What was it like coaching that group through the years? Well, you know, when I first got to Bradshaw, they were sophomores. So, you know, I got to see, you know, three-fourths of their career. And, you know, they were they were a group that had to deal with the COVID year. And, I mean, it was there was a lot of hardships for these guys. And just, you know, just their growth from – you know, their sophomore year through, like I said, they've grown up a whole lot and, and they just displayed a whole lot of leadership. And, you know, they, uh, they're they part of a group that uh, they they were back-to-back region champs, beat Prescott twice. So, you know, they're, they're going to have a, a, a great legacy moving forward. So uh, next year's team uh, won't have to deal with some of, some of the uh, growth that this one did. Uh, obviously, only nine seniors leaving. A majority of the team that pulled off this awesome run is coming back next season. Uh, what kind of growth do you expect to see from this team having won a region championship and uh, won a playoff game? Uh, what's the next step? Well, and that is just take the next step, being able to go further in the playoffs next year. You know, now that we've been there and, you know, we uh, we had to face the two teams that played for the state championship. We know, you know, what it's going to take to get to that point. And that's, you know, that was our message to them, you know, that Monday after after we lost to ALA, it was okay. Now, now we've got to get to work and take that next step. And so, you know, the guys are in the weight room. They've got to get stronger. They've got to get faster. And, and uh, you know, that's what it's going to take. And so we've already started working on that. Perfect. Uh, Coach, thanks so much for joining the show all season long and look forward to talking to you as the season nears next fall. Okay. All right. You bet. Thank you. Junior Gabriel Ricketts led the team with 1,554 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns, establishing himself as one of the best running backs in the 4A conference. Senior Tanner Mitchell led the team with 440 receiving yards and three touchdowns through the air. Senior quarterback Grady Rose completed his time with the Bears, passing for 833 yards this season and throwing six touchdowns. On defense, junior James Giggy led the team with 133 total tackles, while Ricketts topped the team with four sacks. Coming up, a look back at the Prescott High School season. But first, this special episode of Talking Central Arizona Sports is brought to you by Yavapai Plumbing and Heating. Winter is here. Can your heater handle it? Yavapai Plumbing and Heating will keep your home warm and toasty all winter long. Go to ypeinc.com to schedule your service. That's ypeinc.com. Welcome back to this special episode of Talking Central Arizona Sports. Thanks for giving this podcast a listen. Prescott High School came into the 2022 season with an experienced roster, going 7-3 and in the prior season and making it to the quarterfinals, where they lost the eventual state champion runner-up, Poston Butte. The Badgers started off the season 5-1, and with the only loss being to the eventual state champion, ALA Gilbert North. A loss to Bradshaw Mountain on October 21st would prove costly to the Badgers' reach and championship aspirations, as despite not losing again in the regular season and finishing 8-2 overall, they were second in the Grand Canyon region. They beat Apache Junction 35-28 in the opening round of the playoffs, but fell in the quarterfinals to Snowflake. Joining the show now to continue looking back at the Prescott High School football season is head coach Cody Collette. Coach, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for joining the show. So a month has gone by since the end of the season. Looking back, what will you remember about this team? Uh, just all their fight, um, how much they put into the program, and and really a special senior group won playoff games in back-to-back years, shared a league title, you know, went to the playoffs every year there in high school. Um, just a real special group I'll, I'll remember. I'll remember definitely a lot of the wins, but I'll, I'll remember their personalities and just how enjoyable a group 
uh, this one was to be around, no question. What kind of growth did you see in the team from summer camp all the way up until the playoffs in November? I think we continued to work that process and get better every single day. I think um, we uh, had a lot of guys returning and a lot of experience. I think we were a pretty solid team all the way through, but I thought we there was a lot of guys that showed a, a ton of growth as individuals, and I thought we got better and better as a team. I thought we were uh, more balanced as a team offensively. I thought we did some good things, very good things defensively as well. Um, great kicking game. So it was an all-around fantastic year, but I thought we continued to improve, which is sometimes difficult when you have a veteran group like that. What were some of your favorite moments during that time span? Anything maybe off or on the field that uh, you want to talk about? Oh, uh, Definitely. Just hanging out with those guys in the locker room, talking to them. They, like I said, they have real good personalities. They're a real fun group to be around. Uh, the Apache Junction playoff win was very memorable. The Lee Williams win was very memorable. Um, a, lot of, a lot of good moments throughout the season, no question. 24 seniors suited up in the blue and gold for the last time this season. Uh, we've been talking about it a little bit here, but uh, what was it like coaching that group of seniors through the years? Uh, like I said, uh, four years of those guys uh, – a ton of them are on varsity for three years, so it's going to be a, a little bit different not having those guys around. Um, and uh, we're going to miss the heck out of them, but it was a really enjoyable group to be around. Like I said, um, one of the more successful on-field groups, but I will probably remember them equally as much just for uh, how enjoyable they made work. Um, they really uh, bought into the process, came every day to get better, and, and had a lot of fun doing it. And um, – Really, really one of my favorite groups I've had here uh, at Prescott High School, and I've had all great groups. I've um, been really, really blessed um, with wonderful kids, uh, great community. Uh, but this is a, definitely a special one that I will remember uh, for the rest of my coaching career and life. So as you mentioned, uh, the team will look uh, quite a bit different next year with all those seniors uh, graduating. Uh, but there are some key pieces returning. Uh, quarterback Jackson Rice, uh, sophomore Uriah Tanette uh, among them. Uh, obviously way far in advance, but what are you expecting to see from the team next season? Uh, I expect them to continue a strong tradition of Prescott football, which is we don't ever talk specifically about winning. We don't talk about uh, winning a state championship or, or doing this. We talk about being the best we're capable of becoming. We're fully bought into the John Wooden definition of success, which is the best you're capable of becoming. And then that's what we'll strive for next year. And uh, while we have a lot of, great guys to replace no question I think uh, when you're chasing the best you're capable of becoming I think uh, you got a shot and I think it takes a little bit of the pressure off as well and uh, I like our group coming back we don't have a lot of seniors coming back uh, but I like the group we have and we got some good solid young players good freshman group coming in so we're excited about it so when do you guys get started on uh, the work for next season? Is that already underway in the weight room, or, or does that happen in the springtime? Uh, when do you guys start getting ready for uh, the next season? Well, the great part about us is we have a, uh, our freshman football class and our varsity football class. Now, some of those guys will be in other sports and basketball and baseball, and we obviously encourage that and are excited about that. But uh, we get going in class uh, all the time, so we're always working to get better, which is one of the neat parts about being here. And obviously we'll go in the summer and – work on that and do all that stuff. But the great part is we get uh, an hour of class every single day to work on things, primarily in the weight room, speed development uh, will be a huge emphasis as it always is with us and uh, work on getting better and work on a uh, little bit improvement. We always talk about if you can stack just a little bit of improvement each day, you, you got a shot to be a pretty dang good team by the end of it. Hey, thanks so much for uh, joining the show uh, all season long, and I look forward to talking to you as the season nears next fall. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Prescott's rushing attack was dominant all season long, led by school rushing touchdown leader senior Cody Leopold, who had 912 yards and 28 touchdowns on the ground this season. He rushed for over 3,000 yards during his time in the blue and gold and scored 55 touchdowns. Senior Kean McKelvey this year rushed for 899 yards, and Morier Norris had 567. Senior Jake Hilton led the team with 767 receiving yards and five touchdowns through the air. Quarterback Jackson Rice finished his junior season passing for nearly 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns. On defense, senior Cody Hanna led the team with 106 total tackles, while senior Landon Francis had eight sacks. 
I'd like to thank Prescott High School head coach Cody Collette and Bradshaw Mountain head coach Bob Young and the players for joining the show all season long. I'm Torrance Stunham, and this has been a special episode of Talking Central Arizona Sports, part of Talking Glass Media's Cast 11 Podcast Network. Come on back next week for another special episode talking about Central Arizona's own semi-professional soccer team, OJBFC, with Director of Coaching, Georgie Manzula. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here next Tuesday.